to share this evening. Some of you must, may have heard this story before, but I just feel that it will bring context to what I want to talk about tonight. So, many years ago, um, my grandmother died. So, we went to the village um, to do her burial. By the way, I'm from Onchubo, so we went to Onchubo to do the burial. And at that time, I don't know how Onchubo is now because I haven't gone home in a bit, but, you know, they've married me, so. But that time, we didn't have lights. I don't know if they have light now. We didn't have light. Do they have light now? You see, that have currents. That can't do. Okay, there's light now. Okay. So that time, we didn't have light, shall? Why are we acting as if we had light since? We didn't have light that time. So, you know how burial is now? Everybody is hoarding things. So there was malt. There was no cold water anywhere. Then there was this one malt that was cold. So I went to hide it inside one deep freezer somewhere. Thinking that... After everybody has grooved, then me, I'll go and sneak and take my mouth and drink it secretly because that will be the only cold drink in the village. <laughs> so that's how I went. I put my hand. I first thought, it's as if I'm dreaming. Why is the mouth I kept here not here? I came back again. I now remove. Because you know when you took your hand, you won't see something. So I said, do what they taught you. Remove everything. When you're looking for something. How many people did your mother tell that? When you're looking for things, remove everything. So I said, let me remove everything. So I removed everything. I still didn't see my mouth. And please note that hope deferred makes the heart sick. I've kept this mouth since morning. Planning that in the night, I'll drink it. I didn't see my mouth. So I now came outside. I kuna noves. Who carry my mouth? Cousins, friends, and family were outside. Who carry my moth? Then one of my brother's friends say, Now this thing you they find. I say, Yes, bro, no verse, give me my moth. He say, You that you don't have respect. He now turned the moth and put it on the floor. So you will know that anything I did after that, I'm justified, Abby. <laughs> so that this brother just carried my moth and turned it, put my moth for ground. The only, please let me put this in context, the only cold moth in the entire village. So, the warrior in me came out. Now, unfortunately for this guy, he makes the mistake that Satan makes. Or rather, he made the mistake that Satan makes with us, especially as women. And this is a women conference. So I really came for the women. Men, you may be blessed, but it's women I really came for. This earring wants to disgrace me. Pastor Dak, I do want earring. Thank you. <laughs> see, do you see why I like her? So, in his mind, I should do my worst. So I did my worst. That's why I grabbed this brussel. Slam man for moto. <laughs> and all I was seeing was red. All I was hearing was just kill him. And my brothers were trying to get me to remove my hand, but I did not remove my hand, so they removed belt and they were belting me. This one, after we don't put gram my, gram my grandmother for ground, though. Like, we just finished a burial. They were belting me. It's your man, you go kill him. I say, he go die. <laughs> it's your man, you go kill him. He go die now. Nah. That's not the last, worst thing will go happen. <laughs> Long and short of that story is that today, even though that guy is older than me, calls me auntie. So today, I'm here to teach you how to fight like a woman. Satan has an agenda. He's out to get you as a woman. Once you are a woman, because that's what a lot of people don't know. Once you are a woman, Satan is out to get you. But he always underestimates the woman. The problem also is that the woman also underestimates herself. When you want to get into a fight, there are three things that are important. And I'll show you why I say Satan is your underestimating, or rather Satan is your underestimating. I'll show you through the word. But when you want to get into a fight, there are some things that you must know. Number one, you must know your opponent. I knew, I sized that guy up, big as he big. When I'm really angry, I am very strong. I knew I would take this guy out. But he didn't think it was possible. So he let his guard down. It's normal fighting. If, you, if someone lets their guard down, you win them all. No matter how big they are. I know this because I am now 
I'm now channeling that energy into boxing. I'm now learning how to box. So I know this. Well, yes, now I'm wasting the power. I'll just be fighting on the road. You know, it makes sense now. If I feel I make money, Pascal, I'll just call you, pray for me, I'll, be, I'll go and fight. I should not fight. <laughs> so I, say, no. I don't fight anymore, don't worry. But I'm using it for exercise. I'm just saying. First thing, know your opponent. The real problem is that most people don't. The second thing is to know your capabilities. You must know your strengths. You must know, your, you must know what you can do. The third thing is to know the weaponry available to you. Most people just go into a fight and don't know what they're... So they will always beat you. Let's start from Genesis 3. That's where I want to start from today. Tell your neighbor how to fight like a woman. Tell them you're, she's here to teach you how to fight like a woman. Okay, so let me start from Genesis 3. You know the story. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, and he said it's not good for the man to be alone. And then he created the woman. Now, the purpose of the woman was to come to be a helper. So to be a helper required that she would have certain skills. So God did not just say, I'll make a helper, and then left, just created anything. He made something better than what he had made. If someone wants to help you, they have to be better at that thing than you, right? How would you employ someone who cannot do something? So God said, let me make a woman. This woman will help this guy. So he put some things. In fact, the interesting thing about that word, helper, is that the word is originally Isa. And that is the word that describes the helper side of God. So when we say Jehovah Ebenezer, okay, it's the same word that also describes the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit only helps you if you allow him to help you. It's the same way a woman is supposed to function. A woman will only help, is supposed to only help you if you allow her to help you. The second thing that God put in a woman is wisdom. In fact, if you read the entire book of Proverbs, when, the, when, they're replate, when they're referring to wisdom, they don't use he. They use she, meaning that it can equate it to a woman. There are some scriptures I pray over myself from the book of Proverbs. That I, because I see she there, I, I, I'm wisdom. That's my nature. And then, interestingly, the Bible says that a wise woman builds her home. It says a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. So wisdom is another skill that we're giving. Another skill that we're giving is influence. All these things I'm saying to you, they're exactly what the Holy Spirit carries. So if you understand the workings of the Holy Spirit, you understand your workings as a woman. So it's not to force your way into anything. It is influence, wisdom, and the ability to help. God put all those three things. So when God brought them, left them in the garden, you know, then maybe Adam went to name animals and God carried away with work, as most men will. And the woman was looking for who to talk to. She not seemed to gist with her. So she was standing one day. The Bible tells us in Genesis 3 that the serpent now came, Satan. He said, Ace, fine girl, Ace, come. And she said, Me, he said, Come now, you're not day two years, come. She said, oh, me? Yes, come. Did they say you push noise from this tree? He started gisting with her. And she got carried away. And long and short of the story, she shall eat the fruits. <laughs> now, when God came on the scene, God now told them what would happen. I know some people say that God punished man. I'm not even going to go into that debate today. But I think that God was basically telling them what was going to happen. Now, see what happened in verse... Um, Verse 50. Okay, let me start from verse. I want to give you context. Okay. Um, let's start from verse 11. Genesis 3, 11. And God said, because God had asked him, where are you, Adam? And he said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, who told you? Okay. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, the woman you gave to be, me to be with, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled and deceived me and I ate from the forbidden tree. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, more than any animal of the field. On your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Verse 15 is where I'm going. And then God said this, I will put enmity, I will put what? I will put enmity, open hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed and he shall fatally bruise your head and you shall only bruise his heel. Now the interesting thing is that when God came 
on the, on the scene. He said to Satan, the same person that you think you will use to destroy this thing that I have built is the same person that I will use to repair this. So this was the first time ever that the birth of Christ was prophesied and was declared by God himself. So he said, this is the solution to the problem. And that's the thing about God. God is proactive. God never tries to just solve a problem. And this is what I see today, everywhere I go, especially with women. You will make the mistake of choosing rubbish. I don't know, tribe members, Yayabi. I don't know the word for, I don't know another word to use but rubbish. You will choose rubbish and marry. Hmm? Then you will now start causing problem for those who are doing marriage right. By going on social media and saying things like men are scum, men are scum, which one is it? Men are scum. <laughs> Hashtag. And they start fighting fights that is unnecessary just because you have chosen rubbish. And there's a lot going on out there. The reason why I came this weekend is to remind you of who you should be listening to. God said to Adam, who told you? Ask your neighbor who told you. So the things you are hearing, what you need to ask yourself is, who told you? Who told you? Men has come. Who told you? Who told you? It's out there. Everywhere on social media, you're hearing all kinds of things. And I'm used to them. They come for me, but me, no concern me. They didn't, when they die for me, we can have a conversation. Jesus died for me, so I will speak for him. So, don't be, for lack of a better word, don't be silly. Make the right choices before you get married. I hear a lot of people say things like, oh, but I believe, in fact, the one, that, the one I hear most these days, and I'm a marriage counselor. I've been doing this for about 16 years. I hear, I hear this marriage counseling thing there every day. You will see the signs very clear, Pastor. Very clear. He's not born again. You know He's smoking, he's drinking, he's womanizing. Then you will now come. Do counseling. You will not do counseling. Then they will tell you, Pastor M, I'm sent to him. <laughs> Deliver. And I'm here shouting this weekend because I need you to understand that as a woman, you are the one that determines the outcome of your marital life. Nobody marries at gunpoint. I love you. You have a chance to say I don't love you back. It's not by force. So you are seeing all these signs. And, there, and, and if, there's, if there's a system your church has organized, I know a good church like this will have those. Go through your marriage preparatory classes. Don't jump. Don't bypass it. Say, so, yeah, what's in there? Go tell us. It's not the revered it now. It's not what pastor is always preaching every Sunday. They want to delay us. We have three months we want to marry. See, when you are in a hurry like that, there's already a problem. Once you can't wait, there's a problem. And when they are telling you to wait, it's not because we hate you, it's because you are the one that is in love. We are not in love. Our eyes clear. We are seeing it. We are seeing that we see in this road where you they go, road no did yet. They're telling you turn back. You're saying no. Nobody understands him. That's the problem. <laughs> you people who don't know him, that's why. We'll shout and shout and shout and people will get married. The one that annoys me, two months, they will not start putting quotable quote on Instagram. Hashtag. Two months. One of my daughters. That's how we're shouting. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. The same things that were red flags are the same problems she's having today. I told her, I said, let me tell you what's paining me is that you're not the kind of person they should be using to the example. And you know your life can either be an example for other people as warning or example for good. So which one do you want it to be? I told her today, I said, this, this thing you are doing, you know favor, you know favor me. But you see the problem? As Pastor Adafini shouting, don't do, don't do, you go. Even when you're having marital problems, she will hold you on for a few minutes, then she'll go my cordu pastor Cosfini. <laughs> you don't know. She will cordule him. You, she's, she's not praying. She's not praying. She's not praying. <laughs> she's not praying. Because all the prayers, she prayed it before, you know, yeah. You cannot kill my sister for me. Ha. 
So draw your ears. We are talking now. Because these are the things I see. God, the person that is your father, you should be like your father. God is your father. God is very proactive. God will not create problem. How do you create problem by yourself that you will not be able to come out of? And so another one came to me. Don't marry, don't marry. She brought her husband, the guy, she said, oh, this is, she dodged, dodged the system, dodged the system, married as I came. Oh, this is, this is my husband. He said, this is my pastor. The guy said, hi. I said, from this high, I know it's a problem, good day. I did wait to now for front. Two months later, pastor, I'm done. I said, my dear, will you first put something on fire before it can done? We never even wash beans. Moi, moi, they smell. How? You can't be tired. I told her you can't be done. Why are you done? Say, oh, he's mean. He's this, he's that. So I asked her. She was saying all these things. And I said, you didn't do marriage counseling in church. Where did you do your marriage counseling? She said, we didn't really do. Um, so when he goes to his church, I say, which church? He's not born again. She said, no, he's not born again. I say, so why are you expecting an unbeliever to act like a believer? So when you marry an unbeliever, what you do is you've signed up for a life of prayer. Not prayer that he will treat you well, though. Prayer that he will be saved. That he will come to the knowledge of Christ and be saved first. Because if he doesn't have the nature of Christ, he cannot love you like Christ. I don't know why people are pulling me into marriage. That's not what I came to tell you today. But it seems like somebody here needs to hear. In fact, when I was sitting down there as worship was going on, God said to me, there's someone here. Her name is Uche. He said, you've held that for five years. But you are tired of being dumped because you don't want to sleep with men. He says, you want to go and sleep with someone. And he's telling me to tell you that you will get pregnant and everything will go downward from then. I usually don't do this. When I do that, I'll just say, I'll just say God, I will pray. But I just feel the need to save someone's life. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I have a friend who had a dream that she's not sleeping. She slept with the guy, got pregnant, now ran away because the guy was not interested. Got there, had an autistic child. So now she's with no, she's a single mom of it. Listen, you don't need it. Like I said, I'm not even, I'm not even, I don't even, hey, Holy Spirit, just move as you want to. Don't do it. Some of the choices, some of the fights we're having, and some of, you know, there's this, this whole crazy movement, this feminist thing. And honestly, I was just going to preach the word and go, but I think that there are some things we need to address head on. We need to address some things head on. The first thing I asked you was, who told you? Some of the people that are pushing this thing, now understand that there's supposed to be a, a, a whole good movement, you know, initially that started out with, oh, if people are paid, if a man and a woman work, they should be paid the same thing. And so they're fighting for justice and all of that. But listen, you can never use the worldly wisdom to win in God's principles. God created marriage. So I don't really have a problem with this feminism that people are doing in the office. Oh. But to now bring it into church, that's where my own fight starts. If we're going to do things in church, the body of Christ must be run by principles of Christ. So I have a big problem, a big one, with people who make it seem as if, you see, and they say things like, oh, women fight for equality. That in itself negates the whole thing. Because once you start to fight for equality, it means that you first agree you're not equal. So you can't be fighting for equality. You should be fighting for neutrality. I should be a woman and be okay with being a woman. And I can still do great things as a woman. Have you looked at the Bible? Have you read the Bible? Have you seen the women that were doing exploits? Whether it was Deborah as a judge, she saw a problem. Men cowered. This woman said, no, I will arise as a mother. She got up and she said, things will not remain the same. I must make a difference. Whether it is Deborah that went to war or whether it is Jaya that was in her house and won the battle, housewife. Because you'll be saying, oh, me, I'm a housewife. Oh, hey, what can I do? If you are a housewife, there's a skill. There's something you can do that can turn things around. God can use you any way you are. If you are a mother that likes work or you are Mary that likes groove, God can use you any way. Yeah, so Mary in her chop life gang go because again, she didn't really come to suffer in her life. Why? Why can't I sit at Jesus' feet? 
And Jesus said, this one she has chosen will not be taken from her. If Mary wants to be doing point, point, point inside the kitchen, it's really okay. But this girl, leave her for me here. Any way you are, God can use you. So don't allow the world to dictate what. And you see, in marriage, in marriage, feminism can never work. And I'll tell you why. Feminism can never work in marriage because the person who created marriage has principles to run marriage. He has principles. And it's clearly stated. If you read Ephesians 5, it is so clear. He says the man is the head. This is not a case. It's not about equality. It's about ranking. Equality does not affect ranking. We are both equal. Because if before God, there's no man or woman. There's no Jew or Greek. We're all equal before God. We have equal standing before God. We can come to God as a man. My husband can pray God will answer. I can pray God will answer. But when it comes to husband and wife, there's rank because of what? Order. 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 God is not an author of confusion. If God wants to do something, he does it with order. If you even see when he wanted to build the temple, he gave them very clear rules. Do like this. Use this color. Do this measurement. Do like this. Pull rope like this. Move five inches. Move backwards. This, he gave them very clear. So if God wants to build something inanimate, he can do that more detail. Then you think. Marriage, you say, you know what? Just figure it out, guys. Just figure out how you feel. He, he, God, are you joking? That means you don't know him. So he said for there to be order. Now let me tell you. Why the woman is expected to submit? The woman is expected to submit because she has the first right of choice. She has the right to choose who to submit to. God did not say go to the road and be submitting to all men. All men are not your head. Your husband is your head. So if you choose him, auntie, submit to him. Because when they are getting married, they'll be saying all kinds of things. You wear gown, you do. Oh, I do. You look into it. Oh, I do. You're the sunshine of my moon and the moon of my rainbow. Now, you, do you take? I take. I do. Do you really submit in all things? Oh, I do. You'll be doing romantic voice. Now, do the do now. You cannot do. God said, choose a man you can submit to. I mean, that is the fairest thing I've ever heard in my life. When I was growing up, my mom had this rule. If you want to share something. The oldest will share and the youngest will pick first. That's what God did. God said, pick. Then you must submit. In other words, pick your leader and allow him lead you. Nothing else. And then he gave us, he gave us the blueprint to picking the leader. He said, there's an order. There's an order. Number one. God is the head of Christ. Christ is is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. So God is banking on the fact that you will pick a man who is submitted to Christ. Then Christ is submitted to God. Now you, you want to jump the equation. You don't want a man submitted to Christ. You will not go and pick, you, you move out of the equation. You go and pick what I don't know. Sir, did you say animal? Thank you. Animals. You will not pick animal and put inside Inside the question that God had perfectly ordered. That's why he said your submission is unto Christ. Because literally, the man is submitted to Christ. He's only doing what Christ tells him to do. So you are submitting in other words to Christ. So you can't pick an unbeliever. It doesn't work. It doesn't. Go and check all the people pushing this movement. Check all of them. See, my husband is a marriage counselor to most of the celebrities. They will come and send and shout for you people. Then send him DM. They send him DM. Sir, please, how can you help me in my marriage? I say, no, be this girl. I don't say, men has come just now. But she wants to help me. She wants help in her marriage. Pastor K goes, say, leave her. I need help. Which help? But what about the millions she has drawn down? That's my fight. That's my fight. So my question again is, who told you? Be careful who you are listening to. Everything you hear, you must run it by the word of God. Everything. Everything. They move from there now. And you see, where Satan is going. Remember what he said. There will be an enmity between your offspring and his. Where Satan is going is your children. Satan is not after you all. You, you are, they're finished with you. You know what I mean now. It's your children. He's very strategic. So what we're having now is what dysfunctional marriages. 
And it's affecting the children. You think, I'm, me, I'm done. I'll just go. I can come and take care of my children. But you've forgotten that the real reason why God wanted you and your husband together is that balance. He brings the, he brings, he gives your child that nature, identity. And you bring nurture. So that two of you raise a balanced child. Most of the people we have in counseling today are people who are from homes that have been divided. And so these children are battling with so much. I'm not altogether saying that. I mean, I know, I know a lot of people are in terrible situations and terrible marriages. Some of them have no fault of theirs. Maybe the person pretended and all of that. Yes, there are exceptions that prove the rule. But it's not the one you open your eye and enter. And let me say this. The person you are playing with is not playing with you. Satan is not a nuisance. He's an enemy. The difference between this nuisance as an enemy, a nuisance is just trying to annoy you. An enemy wants to destroy you. The Bible says he's come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Satan is not just interested in making you sick. He wants to kill you and destroy you by running down your finances. He has an agenda. So it always amazes me the way Christians, especially Christian women, because all these things rise and fall on you women. You choose the family. You make the family. Anybody can toast you. Any man has the right to toast you. Now him out. If they can do anything he wants. Can come to you and say, oh girl, I like you. It's up to you to say, oh girl, miss me oh. If you see me, they come past another place. I'm not the one you are looking for. But you enter. They now be saying, I'm done. And then the children are now broken. The new one I'm hearing now. <laughs> see, and they're, and they're starting small, small. You know, madness doesn't start. It doesn't start, boom. You could just take stroll. From there, you know they come out again. They will know that, ah. Uh, okay, this is your exercise. Don't turn to madness. You are now trekking the whole day. It's starting small, small. First of all, they are starting with men and women are equal. There's no head of the home. There's no this. Next thing now, they are saying children can now choose their gender. Satan is going somewhere. You think it's this you and your, you and your husband are too small for him now. This is your quarry that you're quarreling. It's too small for him. He has an agenda. So now, little boys are now acting like girls because the mother is stronger. So he wants to be a woman. Meanwhile, he's supposed to get his identity from his dad. He's supposed to know that when there's a problem, the man should rise up to the responsibility. Now, you just see daddy. Eh, there's, no, uh, there's no money. Go and meet your mommy to pay your school fees. Go and meet your mommy to pray for you. Go and meet your mommy. Sir, which one will you now do? <laughs> Don't mind. I've said it many times. The last time I said it, they dragged me on social media. But like I said, they didn't die for me, so you don't consign me. I said it, me. I can't marry a lazy man. I cannot marry I'm planning to. I said it that time. They were saying, eh, I only too much. They dragged me. Blogs dragged me up and down. I said, no, no, business. Kukuma is not physical dragging, so nothing's happening to me. It's my choice. You know why? Because you can invest your life in somebody who has potential and he never realizes potential. So you cannot marry potentials. You must marry patterns. He has been here since. What has he done with his life? Why is it that when you enter his life is when he thinks he's going to make it? I'm going to make it. <laughs> My brother, go and make it first. Be making it, let me be making it. When you're making it, make it. Come and join with my making it. We will not be made. Women, I'm shouting again. You choose families. You choose families. Be careful what they're saying to you. And listen, I don't know where we're getting this thing for. And I know some people will be angry, but let me just tell you the truth. Marriage was not created to make you happy. Marriage was created to make you better. God expected that you will carry your joy as a single person. Oh, if I just meet this guy, he'll be singing to me all, every time. He'll be praying with me. He'll be, let me tell you. Because I know that people think that after service, Pastor Cosfini will go and preach to Pastor Da. He's tired. The person that hears him preach the least is her. She deals with his humanity. When he gets home, he wants to eat. So you are seeing pastor now, you are seeing, there's a difference between the anointing and the human being, no? Oh. 
So you want what that guy can sing when he don't play keyboard like this, like this brother now. Don't play keyboard. Hey God, my children will just be when they, from sleep. My children will be musical. <laughs> Message self where I carry no pretense. <laughs> Marriage is not about you. I don't know why I'm feeling the need to. I think somebody wants to make a mistake. Hear me. Hear me. Carry your joy. I always tell married women, carry, before, you, before you enter single girls, hold Jesus with one hand. Eh? Your more dominant hand. If you are left-handed, hold him with your left hand. If you are right-handed, hold him with your right hand. Then hold your joy with the second one. You enter marriage with Jesus and with joy. If you are looking for your husband to make you happy, you are fooling yourself. You know why? Because even Jesus that can fulfill all your needs. He had to die first. Why do you want to put something on a man that is not able to do? And the reason why the man even came is that he needs help. Because we forget that part of the equation. You are a helper. So what do you do? You help where he needs help. So I hear women complaining. My husband doesn't help with domestic chores. He doesn't, he doesn't like to do anything. He throws his clothes all over the floor. Auntie. 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 We employed you to help oh. If he throws his clothes on the floor, auntie, that means he needs help for you to pick it. And do you know what, what happened? You chose this kind of problem. You chose this man that needs this help. You chose the one that throws his cloth on the floor. <laughs> so you will get it. Can I be picking cloth for the rest of my life? Because what if it never changes? Because this is, I'm hearing all kinds of things and I don't want to go into it. I, because I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, because I'm in counseling, I hear a lot of, a lot of people throwing around words. Oh, men are this, men are that. Listen. Some things is just personality types. Now it seems like every choleric man is narcissistic. You have to be careful, Lo. He's just strong-willed. That man, somebody can marry him and turn him to. Anything he says like this, she will follow him. She said, just follow me. <laughs> are you, you are you are there complaining. But you saw him. You saw him. So you have to make smart decisions. Go be like your father. Be like God. Before there's a problem, God has solved it. Jesus was slain before the foundation of the earth. Before anything, even before he started building. Do you understand? You don't understand. Before God created the heavens and the earth, before man sinned, Jesus was slain. He don't clamp down. Say problem, go day. Uh-uh. It's, it's, it's like, as far as I'm concerned, it's like verse money. You know verse money. You hold, your, you hold it in case this boy that is taking me out. In case I reach there and I feel like eating chicken. And he say, uh-huh. Or he just annoy you. You just pay your verse money. They go to your house. That's what, that's what God did though. He said, this human beings I want to create now. I don't really know how they are. Let me just keep my son down. You just hold the verse money for now. <laughs> we need to be careful when we're watching on social media. Most of these people are miserable. They are coming out and acting like everything's okay. It's not. I'm telling you, it's not okay. It's not okay because there's an order for marriage to work. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, submit to your husband. I have never seen a woman who is thoroughly loved complaining about submission. Why? Somebody has chosen to spoil me, and that's how I will not allow him to spoil me. Did they swear for me? Why? Did I not really want to be happy in life? I want to be happy. So, if you want to spoil me, sir, please, I submit to you. you want to sign me checks, sir, please, sir. And you see the way the sir will be falling from my mouth, like say something has happened. <laughs> sir, sir, please. Ah, the way your, this your car is, baby, it's like two years. I don't really want you to start having mechanic problems, sir. The way you are thinking about me, sir. <laughs> just, it's not like I'm greedy, but sir, I just, you know, I just want to honor you, sir. So, if you want to change it, sir, it's okay, sir. <laughs> it's the one that the husband is a kagum. That you hear say, how can we mess up meats? Because you chose rubbish and see. So please be careful. Be careful. The reason I came here to talk to you about was fighting Satan, but it seems like God, God really wants somebody to hear these things. Marriage has the ability to alter your life forever. I have seen people. Ah, there's one case that still tomorrow, anytime I think about it, still makes me cry. This girl was doing well. Doing very well. 
working in a, perf a beautiful organization outside the country, abroad. Cities and everything. She has said to her life, she now marry animals. It's animals, sir. Plural, sir. Animals. She now married animals who was pretending. Even Jesus said that they are, they are, they are wolf in sheep's clothing. So that's animals. Wolf and sheep together. Animals. This man now proposed to her, this girl now carried everything. Pack up, left her house abroad, gave up her job, everything, and came back to Nigeria. What's all? Should you not marry before? Will you not follow your husband? When you are saying your God will be my God, your people will be my people, what do you think it is? She now says she do, so she had to do now. Pack her load and came to Nigeria. <laughs> if it was not so sad, it would be if it was not so sad, it would be funny. Everything you can imagine is inside. Cheating, no. Stinginess, oh. Like she's, like she's having a mental breakdown. And I also need to say this, women. Marriage is not the only thing you're called to do in life. God called you for great things. You should be so fulfilled in your life that when a man comes on board, it's just an addition. It's an additional assignment. Because marriage is not a reward, it's an assignment. So it should be additional. Not that you shut down everything as if that's all you were born for. When you do that kind of thing, that's when you now have problems in marriage because you've lost who you are. And if you can't give from an empty cup, if you are empty, you can't give joy. The quality of every marriage is dependent on the two people in it. I've said this over and over again. You cannot, if, and I learned this the hard way. Me, I like to tell stories because stories have changed my life. Oh, things that have happened to me in this life. If I can use to do an example for you, you will not make the same mistake. So, there's one knock my mother gave me. Still paying me here. My mother said I should fry egg. But that time, laziness will not allow me to be great. My mother has this saying that you first want to fry four eggs, you break it one one. I mean, that's, the, that's the right way. Uh -huh. Pastor, that's who knows. But you know that time, you have one eye in novel. You are reading novel. Miss and Boone. Very bad. So I was reading it now, and I said, ah, if I bring plates, we'll do it one, 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 now wash me. Let me just break all the eggs. I broke the first one, broke the second one, broke the second one. Everything was okay. But you know Satan has to put hand in your matter. So I brought the last egg, and it was bad. And I've already thrown it inside. And I broke it in directly. So it spoiled all the eggs. So I learned that irrespective of how good one egg is, as far as the other one is bad, the omelette will be bad. So irrespective of how good you are, if you marry rubbish, your marriage will be rubbish. Because marriage is too heavy for one person to carry. Marriage is the responsibility of two people who understand marriage. They understand their needs and understand each other's roles. Their roles are needs in marriage. The man, his role is leadership and he needs to be a leader. You don't know that. You are neutering your husband. There's one woman. Everything she does for the man, everything. I was telling her that. that I said, I don't, girls, now they try you. Me, I'm, I, I do not come to, I doesn't know. I'm a helper. This automatically in my mind reads as he's doing something that requires help. I will only help you if you are doing something that needs help. You marry somebody. He has been telling you, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There's one particular woman. Hey, God. Hey, God. Women, may not cry for people today. There's one particular woman. After all her life savings, she married somebody. She said he has plans to do business. You see why I said don't, don't marry planning to. Single girls, are you here? Please draw your ear. That's how we know you are single. Guys, look around. Anybody drawing ears? <laughs> I'm helping you people because you don't know how to find wife. They see them. They're inside here. This is how you know wife. You will leave this one. Go outside. They come and begin to pass that trouble. Single girls, draw your ear again. Or your brothers look well, nothing. They can't do you anything. They are still holding their ear. Draw your ear. Hey, hear what I'm saying. She carried all her savings. She's planning to do this. She's planning to do that. She carried her life savings and set up first business for him. Uncle ran it down. By this time, they were married. Because she has invested. Do you understand? She has invested, so she just can't draw back again. Let her see this thing through. Uncle ran down and down. Inside the marriage, he said, oh, that that one, because he didn't, run, he, did, he didn't plan himself well. His business plan did not something, something, something. She gave him another money again. She raised money again for him. He ran the second one down. They're on the third one now. 
running down businesses. So I now asked her, I said, you have all this money. Why are you not doing the business? She said, because she doesn't want it to look as if her husband is not doing anything. Shame. Make smart decisions as a single person. You must be doing something with your own life as well. I don't even understand the logic of these things. You give a man money to do business. He messes it up the first time. Isn't that a sign for you to, if I, for you to have given him the first time, you are greater than some of us, but let's just assume you are more born again than me and you did that. And it didn't turn out well. Isn't that the best time to go back? You gave him money, it didn't work. You now gave him your life. At least life you can, money you can make back. This life that you now connect with him forever and ever, you are tied. There's one woman that married. You know, when, you, when, you, when men are, like I said before, men are, they need it. They need you to give them room. That's why God says submit. Because men need to lead. Men are created to be leaders. So you are doing everything for them. After a while, they will become neuter. They will become like mumu. Ah. There's a saying in my place. Well, there's, I don't know. I don't want to say it in Hebrew, But there's a saying in my place that it's better for you to... <laughs> It's better for you to, it's better to burn mumu than to burn thief. No, sorry, it's better to burn thief than to burn mumu. When you both people know it now. My mother says it all the time. It's better for you that he's think. I mean, none is good, you know. That's why I didn't want to say the proverb. It's not really good. But the idea is that you can't keep neutralizing this man. This girl, her husband couldn't keep a job, nothing. She was working. For those of you who know Lagos well, they live in Ikorodu. She was working on the island. They live in the corridor because that's what she could afford. She was paying school fees, paying house rent, paying everything. She would go to work, he's at home, that he's looking for a job. Stand up, he said, no, the Yasen TV out. Story, story. One day he called her. I've shared this before. People that know my, watch my YouTube channel, I've shared it before. Called her. Be coming home, be coming home. She said she, she left. The way he called her, she thought something. She left the office, took permission, and ran home. From Island, Victoria Island, to Ikorodu, and rushed into the house. What is it? What is it? He said DSTV had finished. He wanted her to pay. <laughs> True story. True story. You people have off time. Well, I don't even know my time. <laughs> True story. True story. So there are things out there, you can't, as a, especially as a Christian girl, you have the spirit of God within you. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. You can't go into marriage without praying. I know some of these things, they don't, they just say, are you compatible? Are you something, something? Do this for compatibility test. Listen, listen. You can do every test possible. I, I understand. I do them. I do all those psychometric tests, all those things. But bottom line, there's still something on the inside of us called the Holy Spirit. He's the one that will tell you this thing looks good though. But my dear, come out they go. Come, let's go. So that prayer you can't take out of it. Prayer is the greatest tool that you will have. This evening, I had planned all the how to fight. So I had some of the things I had planned to, to, to share with you people. I was going to say you should fight with praise. And I talked about Miriam. How Miriam got all the other women. More, out of, more, more in the capacity of a supporter. So if God is fighting for you, you are praising him. That's, that's a, a faith move, knowing that God will get me out of this, so you are praising him in advance. The second thing I was going to say was fight with wisdom. Fight like Abigail, okay? You, you, know, you know how she, when David came, she didn't come there and say, who are you? Do you know my husband is neighbor? She came there and just said, sir, please don't be angry, sir. This is my husband. He said, yes, man, don't be angry. What do you want, food, sir? Oh, yeah, I did not know I was not there, sir. Sorry, do, ah, you can't sell your hand. You are the king. David's anger just, that was wisdom. So that's another way to fight. I talked about fighting with Jael. Now, when I was not looking for fighting with prayer, I was not telling my people, I said, please, can you help me? Because we're talking about the message for him. I said, give me, a, give me someone in the Bible, who, a woman who fought with prayer. And they were calling different people. Then the Holy Spirit now said to me, you, Unko, that's all I have. Ah, people don't offend me. Oh. Hey. I came with some people, they will tell you. They don't offend me. And I don't pray for that die prayer. No. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, he says you will ask anything. <laughs> and you know why you ask anything and to be done for you? 
is because you are abiding in his word. Everything you are now asking is according to his word. <laughs> I know that the God that I serve is Jehovah Roy, the God who sees me. I know that he's Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord, the man of war. Hey, <laughs> you can't touch me and go scot free, oh. Ah. Uh, do you know how bad it is? When I saw that Moses was on his own, oh, ah, you can't even find me in secret place if you think bad thoughts for me. <laughs> Moses was on his own. He didn't know anything. His brother and his sister were gossiping him. God now came to call him, come. When I saw that thing, I said, God is even fighting battles we don't know anything about. Uh -uh. What kind of God is this one? Even battles we know nothing about. Called Moses, say, come. See these two people. They are not afraid. They are gossiping about you. Say, but don't worry, I've given this one leprosy. He said, ah, God does not tell him. He said, come, shut up. I want to help you, you even know. If, if our father has passed in our face, we should be outside. Come on, get out of here. God was fighting. I said, if God can do that for Moses... I have a greater covenant. Hey, so all I have to do is call the name of my God. That's all. That's all. Prayer is the only thing, eh? The only weapon that is useful at all times. I know you don't hear these things anymore. In, thank God for your church. You'll be hearing it in church. But on social media, which is everybody's church now, <laughs> the church on social media, I'm laughing. We don't hear those things anymore. They give you fire, you give fire for fire. What does the word say? That a soft answer turns away wrath. Doesn't mean that God is not going to fight though. When he say turn your cheek, it doesn't mean God is not going to fight though. God is just telling you, you walk away from it. He says, you forgive, but I will fight for you. He says, you hold your peace, but I will fight for you. So listen, women, even women who their husbands are cheating on them. I tell them this all the time. They say, hey, I say, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What? Say, I'm going to go and fight. Good. I say, if you go there, then blind your eye. <laughs> ah. If they blind your eye, the man go go with the person who blind your eye, and you no go see husband again. It's not better you go, JJ, if you even want to go. Go to God. He's the God. Ah, he's the God who fights correctly. There are places God can touch the enemy. That you would never dream of. There are times that God will need to correct. There's a book that my husband has been begging me to bring out. Prayers for difficult husbands and the side chicks that will not let them go. <laughs> my husband has been begging me to bring out that book. I said, no, no, no. Those prayers, we're still praying them. Fibroid. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's a punishment for adultery. Fibroid. The death was almost fainted. Barrenness. It's a punishment. Oh, you don't know. No, please let me, let me clarify because I know Insta blog people. I'm not saying everybody has five brothers because they cheated you. Because I know Insta blog. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there are punishments. Do you understand? They're punished. There's a way God fights. So even your husband can be annoying you. God will just close his business. How do I know? Because if a man does not know how to deal with you with understanding, his prayers will not be answered. Are you seeing the word? The solution is already in the word. So why are you fighting? You jack on today, you jack on tomorrow, he blow you for eye, he blow you for nose, but you're just wounding yourself on nothing. And God is saying, you know what? Just stay calm. I will fight for you. He's the God that fights battles. You don't even, if you know the thing God is saving you from on a daily basis. Uh, do you think it's every human being that is a human being? I uh, know some people, when I say people laughing, some people, they didn't do. Do you know they did not day? some people? You'll be hugging them like this. You don't know. Do you, even Jesus saw it now. Judas. Did you not see Judas follow? Do you know that everywhere Jesus went, he said the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. Judas was with him now. Judas did not lay head to. Times that they were, they almost stoned Jesus. Judas was there now. Judas followed him throughout. But in the last minute when Satan entered, that's when they saw that this one is not among. It's not one of us. So some, sometimes... I think it was 2000 and, 2018, I saw human beings for what they really are. I encountered one demonic hey, human being in my life that I thought was a human being. And so I was crying one day, and then the Lord said to me, why are you crying like this? I said, how can people be wicked? He said, why are you talking to me as if it's revelation? 
He said, go and read the Bible. I am the one that said the heart of man is desperately wicked. So why are you now telling me as if it's news? He said, clean your eyes. I am the only one that can fight this battle. That's why I stand up. Oh. Listen, prayer. Prayer. Do you know one of the prayers? I have this book. Pray for, okay, I, I came with some books. I always forget to do this. Please, um, the reason why I carry books about is really because I can't teach everything, okay? So I brought this book, Waiting for Isaac. It's for any waiting season in your life. A to Z of marriage. Seven questions wise women ask. See, you see me, I'm shouting since morning. Women. Because there are some things you need to know. Some things you need to know. Somebody said, I want to marry you. God help me to remember what I was going to say. Some men say they want to marry you. You have carrying body, carrying body. One of the questions to ask is when? You don't know. Eh? I love you. I want you to be my wife. When? Because as a man grows older, his options increase. As a woman grows older, her options... So you will be in that relationship 10 years. He will not say it's done. And move on. You, the people that can marry you, have reduced, auntie. You have invested 10 years without dividend. I want to marry you. Why? Of all the many girls that are walking about, why me? Go and, buy, go and ask the questions there. Who should I marry? Don't marry animals. <laughs> I've learned new one today. <laughs> Don't marry what? Animals. Kayil. Now, this book I wanted to bring, show you. This book... It's, my, it's a prayer journal. So I wrote scriptures that I've been praying for my husband for years. Now, one of the prayers that I struggled with, but God kept insisting I should pray, I wrote it in this book, is that same scripture that I quoted to you a few minutes ago that talks about if a man does not deal with you with understanding, his prayers will be hindered. So I started praying for my husband. I started praying that God, you will teach my husband to love me so that his prayers will not be hindered. Because if his prayers are hindered, it will affect me still. So he has to learn to deal with me with understanding. So I started praying, God, please teach him. If I do something, let him know what it is. Let him ask. Let him talk. I mean, some of those things may seem like they don't make sense. But instead of nagging, because I can be nagging. Why are you treating me like this? Why are you behaving like that? Why? I said, no, I don't have the energy. If I nag and his prayers are he's still in that, he's praying me. So I started praying. I pray. There's nothing I don't pray. <laughs> Everything. If you may fool yourself into thinking that, oh, your husband is a Christian, oh, your husband is a loving man, and see, you will pray that he will drink water from his own well. Because even if he's not chasing women, women are chasing him. Mm. You don't want to agree because, I mean, my husband is a Christian. Whose husband is not Christian? <laughs> Whose husband is not Christian? But the girls out there, are they Christian? <laughs> People don't even understand what's happening there. <laughs> ah, you don't know what's going on. If you know what's going on, you'll be praying. You see, if, and if you want it, now lock. If you want it, now lock. He's bringing the spirit of adultery into your home. A spirit that does not leave families. Go and ask any man, any man that is cheating. Find out whether his father did not cheat. Or his grandfather did not cheat. I mean, an infidelity recovery coach. When I talk to them, you see, it's, it's, it's running through families. You say, not concern. It concerns you, you don't know. The two shall become... They use your body, they do nonsense. You say it concern you. It concern you. Pray. If you don't know what to pray, go and buy the book. I put scriptures here. Go and pray for your husband. Stop fighting. Stop nagging. Stop doing feminism. It does not work. Prayer. People will not tell you these things again. Prayer. Prayer works. I've seen mad men turn around. Prayer. Hey. The heart of the king is in God's hands. Note he did not say the heart of the king is in the queen's hand. I give you my heart today as my loving. That's where he gives you now. God and the deal. So for your own good, you better be praying. And God will turn it whichever way he please it. So you better be praying and you better be in a relationship with God. Some of the things that we put ourselves in is because we're not listening to God. If you are going to succeed and survive in this world, because where I started from was that Satan is your enemy. Satan is out to get you. Satan doesn't want you to have a good home. He doesn't want your children to be saved. He wants them to be gay. He wants them to want to, your sons want to make up. And you think it's, no, it's just plain. Now from club then they enter dance now. 
What's that guy's name that dresses like a woman on social media? Hey, hey. You see, no, his mother's makeup he first started playing with. No, be dance with the inside now. Oh, leave him. It's just, oh, it's just, it's just curious. Curiosity did what? Satan is after you. He doesn't want you to have children. Why? Because the only thing that God is even interested in, in your marriage, is children. That's the only thing. He said, people can be loving, you can be kissing, you can be doing anything you want to do. Just give me godly seed. That's all I want. And Satan is trying to make sure you don't have. Listen, godly seed is different from well-behaved seed. Godly means that it is born of God. God wants your children saved. That's what he's saying. He's not saying they should have moral, moral values. I mean, what, what do they call it to say? That's not what God is saying. And parenting is two of you. If two of you are quarreling, how can you parent together? Parenting is not a woman's job. It's for everybody. Were you blessed this evening? I don't even know how I ended up teaching about marriage. That's not what I came to teach about. But obviously, God wanted to rescue somebody here tonight. Can we just lift our hands to heaven and we just pray tonight? Father, I thank you. I thank you that your will was done, oh God. Thank you that the word that you sent me to speak was delivered. I ask that there will be healing in hearts, that ears will remember this instruction in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, praise God.